So the first presentation I've seen, thanks a lot. That was really impressive from the advertiser's view. Uh, we are a BI company. We are collecting also a lot of data, but we are working for uh, retail businesses. So we are basically working from the other side of the market for e-commerce company, for multi-channel merchants, for uh, platforms who do business with consumers and uh, doing marketing campaigns, but also other stuff as well uh, in a very broad range with a high number of marketing channels and campaigns, basically. Um, Incuda is four years old. I'm one of the founders. Uh, we are a BI platform targeted for these verticals, so retailers, e-commerce, multi-channel uh, commerce companies. We have business partners working together with the strategy consultants, business consultants, uh, marketing agencies, basically. Our mission is to provide high quality BI data warehousing to our market in an environment where competition is growing very quickly, where uh, a lot of companies either have no um, proper data warehouse or they have a data warehouse but it's growing out either from the data volume and performance side or they have an increased need of bringing together the traditional business, the traditional channels in e-commerce and the online and mobile businesses. And then, um, that step bring going to the next level of maturity on the BI with the integrated view. What I want to show you to tonight, today, tonight, is a bit of uh, what we call user journeys, how we do that. And uh, I not only want to show it to you, I also want to get feedback from you. Um, is anybody here is interested in user journeys? Wow, that's good. So I hope I take along more than I show you. Um, we have a couple of ideas how we do it. User journeys is a very popular uh, topic. Uh, some might say a buzzword, but it's a highly uh, efficient tool in a couple of situations. And I want to show you basically how we do it. One of the cornerstones uh, of the data sources is uh, web tracking, mobile tracking, click data. Um, we're working with a wide range of, of web track providers. Berlin, non-Berlin based providers, Google Analytics Premium is one, Freebird stuff. We are also working with Snowplow and we like it most, basically. Uh, I, I really appreciate what the guys are doing. It's a very good tool for us, for the things that we need from uh, tracking tools. Um, and I try to give you a couple of examples in um, the different areas when I explain how we do user journey modeling why Snowplow is especially good for these things that we want to do and want to achieve. Um, any questions you might have, please ask anytime. Don't wait until the end. When you have a question, just give me a sign. I try or, or shout if I don't see it, shout at me and try uh, to discuss the items, the questions, the ideas. Yes, if you do both strategy consulting and technology consulting or only technology consulting? We are the data providers, data management providers. We have partners who are doing strategy and business consulting. We are doing this not. We are the data, the data uh, taking care about uh, collecting, integrating, providing data in the data platform. That's our core business. Everything else is with the partners. So, uh, User journey is mostly about performance optimization, performance management. And you have different approaches how you can do that. You can do it on a keyword level, an AdWord level. You can um, work, uh, do it on campaign level, multi-step, multi-channel campaigns. You can uh, use journeys. That's what I want to talk about tonight. And you can uh, also use cohorts. There's no right and wrong. Different approaches have different goals and you use it in different situations. What is the interesting stuff for us in, in the user journeys? is it's a very good tool in an environment where you have a, a, a high number of, of marketing activities going in parallel. And to measure these effects which happen all the time and in parallel, the user journey is a quite useful tool for us. Um, and this is something which distinguishes it from the other approaches of success, of measuring success. Campaigns, keywords, AdWords is always more local. The journey helps you to really measure success from online, offline, off-site, uh, even multiple keywords and campaigns and email stuff going on in parallel. That's what we, what we believe uh, is where, where the journeys really come, in, come into the play. And for the dig digital source, Snowplow is one of the major providers for the mobile, 
for the web, uh, for other uh, application tracking stuff. Um, and it delivers us the raw data. So we are always collecting raw data, detailed data, like we heard before. Uh, you don't want to have aggregated data because then you're stuck afterwards when you go into operational mode. So measuring stuff, analyzing stuff, understanding things is one part of the story. Then getting operational is the second one. And to be able to get operational, is you really need to have the detailed data, the cookie ID, the email address, the postal address, uh, whatever. So why are journeys uh, a bit, bit difficult? Journeys um, of, of people. In, in today's environment is are happening across channels and devices. What we see from our retail customers for repeat buyers that in uh, uh, six to 12 months period, uh, they, they use like more than a handful of marketing partners, marketing channels, how it's called in Google. You have uh, different contact channels. You have more than one customer ID, finally. You have uh, more than one email address. And you have four, five, six, seven user devices what people are using, and that's getting more and more. So this was something that we measured like half a year before, and the environment is simply getting bigger, bigger, and more complex. So what you see when you look at the raw data, are always small pieces of your information, and uh, what you aim to do is to bring these pieces together and build uh, a representation of a person. So everything that belongs to a person brings together, but also not more than the one person uh, does on, um, on the different touch points. Uh, what, what is the impact on the marketing performance? If you don't bring together the different devices and the different channels, uh, what we see is the information phase is on different devices than the buying phase. And if you just see the buying devices and the buying uh, transactions, and you optimize your, your funnel, and you're cutting off your information devices, then afterwards, they don't make more, more business, unfortunately. If you look in the CRM on the 360 degree user view, and you have five devices, you see only two, I mean, you're losing like 50% of your custom information. Um, so this is not where, you, that's not where you want to stop. You want to go further in understanding really your, um, your customer as good as possible. And the third one is on the product side. So these are the three main topics I want to show you something about today. Um, when people, sometimes you ask people, you go, we, we go to our retailers, uh, we say, how is your buying decision? Like, ah, we have lots of people who come and buy. They come and buy. Journey is one click, one visit long. And uh, this, this is funny. Uh, this is quite typical, but this is not true. Uh, they just cannot see it when they look at the raw data. What we see normally, what, how I work as a, as a person, is first I get the information on something I want to have, then I uh, do the research and then I buy it. And if we get a proper setup in our environment, then we can see this behavior more and more that this really happens in real-time world. So um, interest behavior, interest funnels leading to conversion funnels is the third thing where you want to get the channels and the devices together. This is already what I told you. If you look at the raw data, you see lots of journeys with the one click and buyers. Um, you see a lot of mobile interest, which do not convert. Mobile business also goes up, but you still see a lot of intense information gathering on the mobile faces, but uh, you see less conversions there. Um, and you see, if you look across your business, daytime hours where there seems to be more people looking around and other daytime hours where more people come buying. At the end of the day, the same people just on different devices. Um, what, what we see, basically people before they buy, they look what they want to buy. So they don't buy randomly. They have some kind of idea on the, what they want to have. They do uh, information phase, buying phase on different devices, mobile, work, work is a big place. Sometimes for, for buying also, information is then at home. It's funny. Um, during the daytime, um, the device usage changes. Obviously in the morning you have the mobile stuff. Family and friends using the same devices. That's something people overlook when they do the journey stuff. Different people working on the same, buying on the same cookies. That's funny. Um, and then what you see uh, when you go in the user consolidation, finding out which devices belong to which people happens over time. Uh, it doesn't happen at the start of, of the first contact. It happens over time. It happens bit by bit. And uh, you get the opportunities to consolidate your 
pieces uh, over time. And then you have to react on that quite quickly and quite efficiently. This is one example. I don't know how deep I have to go into that. Uh, basically, it's a very, very simple message I want to show you here. Um, you have a lot of marketing channels, contact channels. You have a, a few sales channels. And normally you have one like backend data warehouse or ERP system. And these are different layers of different kind of information. Um, here you have your sales and profit information. That's the most important for a re retailer. That's what, what the main stuff at the end of the month, if you have earned money or not. This is the operational touch points where you, where you sell your uh, products. And here you have a wide variety of marketing and intact interaction channels that might be marketing channels might be email channels might be uh, whatever uh, corporations that you have and the, the data that we uh, collect for the journeys comes in di from different layers that means coming on different um, technical levels it's different technology to gather data and this is this is typical for snowplow uh, partly snowplow is also here but here you have external apis and then often, even for the established retailers that we work with, these areas are quite separate. They're, they have the old world and they have the new world. And they're very difficult for them to bring that together. Um, and if you have the different layers, what, we, what you want to do in the user journey is to interweave all the different boxes in all the different touch points and activities into something like a network. You want to bring all the different data sources together and create a, a network of, of data information about traffic, visitors, and at the end of the day, persons. And you do something like you have the visits and the contacts, you have the email clicks, you have the email open events, you have the email subscriptions, you have the orders, you have the login data, you have campaign information, you have um, shipments, you have returns and consults. And this uh, information is all very useful to even to identify single persons. It's also useful for profitability, but even for integrating and, and finding out which devices belong to which people, every bit of information is, can be very useful. So the broader the range is that you, of, of the sources that you can bring together, the more efficient you can be in building the personas. And we even integrate off-site, offline, store traffic information, call center service information, and from every process and uh, almost every application you get can get some, uh, some support in integrating devices and channels into persons. It's piecework. Every system gives you a bit of information. Um, and that's what we're doing quite extensively to really integrate as much as possible and get the different rules on uh, bringing the data, data packages together uh, in, in something like a person representation. What we did was uh, at a customer site, that's from a customer, it's a pure play online retail store. Um, they're doing over 100 million in revenue, so they're a bit bigger. We looked at the German store and they did a project with the um, journey agency. And the journey agency is very well versed, very experienced working together with the click data and all that stuff. And they built the journey stuff and we built our journeys with the internal data. And the same data that they use, but including internal data. And what we found out that it's hard to read. They had like 50% uh, of journeys with one or two clicks for the buyers, buyer journeys. Um, and we found like 30%. Uh, lot, lot, uh, they had a lot more journeys, which looked like they had one or two um, clicks for the buyers. In the middle, three to six clicks, uh, it's roughly the same, but we had uh, much more journeys, which had uh, seven or more clicks so we had much more, so to say, longer journeys. They are not longer, just we could identify more touch points and more devices of the same users. And um, we did uh, also a qualitative valuation if these um, journeys are, are correct by analyzing um, backend data, by uh, um, making test campaigns and validating the results of that. And this is basically why, why is this orange approach better in identifying longer journeys? It's simply better uh, because we have internal data, we have more source systems, and we have a more flexible approach to bringing uh, different data pieces of users together. What is the benefit? 
if you want to activate customers for, for buyers, the more touch points you find in a journey, the better you understand the journey structure, the online marketing structure, and the more opportunities to have to uh, set an impulse to, to proactively approach the customer and do uh, incentive or whatever. So the, the more precise the information is, the better you can do online marketing CM, and then also the uh, provision, uh, showing them the relevant product information. Um, that was one case that we did, uh, which showed quite easily um, if you have more information and bring that together, you can have a more precise uh, description of the journeys. Yeah, and, and what is really important is for, for the Snowplow tool here, or for the, for the tracking tool in general, is that uh, you have a complete control of the information that you track. Of, um, first, you get all the detailed data. You get it in a way which is not interpreted. We are working with Google Analytics Premium. So, uh, and people like Google a lot. I like Google a lot too, but Google builds the products for themselves. It doesn't build the products for the retailers. And never forget that, uh, but it's so free. And if you have in the back end a Snowplow uh, system, then everything is good. You have a beautiful front end uh, in the front. You have the proper data at the back end, then it's a good combination. And you need that. You need good base data for good journeys. Um, so parameters, cookies, tracking parameters, uh, additional context or business model relevant information is really critical to get the stuff together. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a summary. Important thing is for user consolidation that you have as many touch points, as many channels. Bring them together, build something where you can integrate the users over time. You won't see everyone immediately that they are the same persons. It makes, uh, takes some time. And the critical stuff here is also to not only re rely on technology, you have to really configure your processes and your applications in a way that you can make use of the data afterwards. So if you don't configure your processes and applications, then uh, you won't be able to do cross-device detection. That will be really, really difficult. Because if you wait for logins, uh, you will wait for forever from a mobile device. That's not the solution. Um, so it's always a combination of technology and, and processes. Now, open source, uh, Snowplow, very configurable. Uh, performance is good and we can really implement all the different trackings that we need. That's very, very helpful for us. Okay. Do you have any questions or feedback on, on the general approach for the user journeys? Otherwise, I go on. So. How long did that just a customer journey example project take? That's our business. That's our part of our platform. No, but how long did it take? Four years. That's uh, one of the core functionalities. The contact history and the, user, uh, the journey is one of the core modules of our BI platform. So this is always growing, always evolving. So you have a platform, like a software? Yeah, sorry, sorry if I didn't. Uh, we have a SaaS platform for BI, data warehouse and BI platform, which is targeted for retailers. Retailers, multi-channel commerce companies, um, and everyone who's doing business in um, a sales channel, electronic or not, uh, with the consumers, B2C. And we provide it as a SaaS model. We have um, connectors to the data sources. We have a data model for which targets a retail and commerce models. We have BI platform with reports. And it's very quick uh, to set it up. We, have, uh, we do the test phases. Uh, we have four weeks of test, uh, technical integration, then four weeks of functional tests. So we say to our uh, prospects, we take your data, you try the platform with your data. After four weeks of testing, you say it works or it doesn't work. And it's really fast for data warehouse. And then you have integration of the, the orders, the revenues, the journeys, uh, all, all the normal stuff that the retailer does. That's what we do as a business. And the user journey is one of the core elements for the online marketing, for the CRM, uh, for marketing controlling, and for product management. So we really try to make, uh, use this information in different departments. So there's a subscription fee to that? Yeah. You can also buy a license, but the normal stuff is they have a subscription fee. Yeah. Good. Thanks for the question. <laughs> so, uh, device, uh, user consolidation um, is 
part of it is hard work and part of it is like a, um, an art. So it, it could be beautiful, it could work or could not work. So in the first level we have rules like a login, like a, uh, like a phone number which clearly identifies a person. And these rules are very fixed and very reliable and they are the core, the, the basis of the user consolidation. Based on, on, um, on this level we have a um, a set of rules which are highly probable, so, but not 100% secure. And we can activate and deactivate these rules depending on the business model. Uh, depending if you sell very simple products or very, very complex uh, products, the, the browsing and buy, buying behavior is completely different or might be completely different. And some rules apply only in several business models, others not. So we can activate and deactivate the rules and we can even roll them back. If you see a rule is not working, we can do a rollback on the rules. Uh, fix the rule or deactivate it and recalculate the business models. These first two levels are very strongly focused on a technical level, like cookie IDs, login IDs, all that stuff. And then, um, this is nice. This is what some people do. And then we need a, a level which goes beyond the technical stuff, which really goes on the, business, on the functional or on the business level and do a, a, a validation on the business level, either commit or reject the rules based on, on real world rules. And these are um, very, very specific to our customers' business models. So each of our customers have partly the same but partly also different rules for that. And this goes like how you want to treat household people buying from the same cookie. You want to have them as a single person or a different person. If a, a man and a woman buying from the same household, um, if you push an email to one of them, want, do you want to place both products, categories, or only one, stuff like this? If people, are, friends are sitting together buying um, glasses, looking, are the glasses nice, are they not nice? Um, do you want to keep them as a, as a friends couple, so to say, or you want to separate them in different persons? And this is very, very important when you want to go into the targeting based with the journey data. So often journey data is for AdWords and pricing and all that stuff. I mean, if you have 10% uh, error, then, then you don't care. Uh, if you go into targeting uh, in, in the CM campaigns, uh, you don't want to have this problem, the 10% error. If you target uh, like a top customer, male with the female products, maybe it's not a good idea. And our retailers don't want to do that. So this level is really, really important, even going down to uh, look at single cases of, of um, consolidations and, and really rework and correct single uh, mappings if you want to do that. That's a very simple um, visualization. Here you have like Snowplow visit with all the different events. You have click-ins, you have clicks on the site, you have the visit information, browser information, you have um, maybe a login or a, a um, newsletter subscription, you have an order as a guest or a locked-in customer, you have user devices that you know, you have new ones, and we have a user object. On the user object you have the contact data, you have the uh, history profiles, you have the devices, and um, either if it's a known or an unknown device you create a, a new user or you add to the existing user. And then, so this is on the physical level, where the uh, level one, the secure rules apply. And then we have a set of rules, a rule set on for the second level with the, um, um, with the rules which are not 100% secure, but very probably. And this is basically here, this level on the, on the left side where we um, consolidate users based on email behavior, for example, or based on special um, click data behavior. And we consolidate these users on a, on a master user level. A master user is simply a virtual aggregation of, of different user elements. The user is the physical element, and in the access layer to the data warehouse, we have a master user concept, which is a view on a, on a number of users, basically. And this is uh, managed dynamically. If you find a new consolidation, this master user automatically incorporates the, the new user. All the metrics, all the profile information, everything is automated uh, automatically, even for the past. That's very, very important because you don't, uh, you're not able to recalculate the data history when you find it uh, on a bigger customer base. And then you have the functional validation which can uh, uh, confirm or reject single elements from the business side. Uh, this is a very simple approach on different layers. 
separating the physical users and building a logical master user element and managing uh, the different rule sets from the technical side or the functional side um, on top of that. What is really important is uh, if you want not only to analyze user journeys, but really to do targeting, they must be really, really, really good. Really good. So you must, and to be sure that it's really good, you have to, you must be able to analyze if the mappings are correct. You have to go into the samples and check if they're really, really correct. And if you find problems, you have, must be able to fix them. So this automatic user detection is good for analysis, uh, but not good for, for CM and targeting. That's not good enough. That's the problem. Um, what, what is really helping there, as again, with Snowplow is this very flexible in configuration and tagging. We can do a very precise tagging on that. Uh, and we can see where it's clear, where it's unclear when we are trying to combine different elements of the user data. Um, what I would recommend you at the same time, um, user consolidation is something that we really love to do. Just make sure that you remain able to select on the oper operational um, activities. If you want to reply to an order from the customer, you really, really, really want to reply on the same email address that he provided you on, on the order, even if he uses another three times more often. Uh, make sure that you can do both. Not, uh, that was one error we did at the beginning. We said, what is the most, user, uh, most frequent email address that he uses? But the customer said us, no, that's no good. So believe me, uh, that at some point of time, you want to may, may be able to do both. So the analytical stuff, the CM stuff, and the operational stuff. Um, so we have the user consolidation uh, across the different devices. When you have the data from the devices and the journeys, then building, calculating the journeys is really simple. That's really simple. Uh, you consolidate your data. You, you uh, cut it into the conversion element, uh, elements. Um, you calculate it on the, on the lowest level. Uh, you don't calculate it on the marketing channel. You really calculate it on the ad media item. And uh, you have to take care a bit about the performance. But this is really straightforward. Uh, I don't want to explain how you calculate the journeys. If you have the good data, then that, that's really simple. Uh, we do a couple of things which go in the uh, area of dynamic um, attribution for um, when do clicks happen, how often do they happen, how long ago. That's something you can read on Google. Uh, it's good to do. Uh, and it's nice to do and it makes a bit different, but it doesn't make the big difference. What, what, we have, what, we, what I believe, um, this attribution logic is really very sexy. All that stuff is really, really very sexy. But it's really completely useless if you don't have your, journeys, uh, your channels and your devices together. If you're losing like two devices out of five, then the attribution logic is no good. Forget it. Uh, work on the attribution logic when you have your homework done when you have the devices and the channels together. Then work really hard on your attribution logic, not before. Because the logic, what we have seen, we do bar stuff and U curves and whatever. The difference is not so big. If you're missing out on one important channel, if you don't have call center, complaints. If you have stores, you don't have them in included. That's much, forget about the attribution. This impact is much bigger than if you have a, U, uh, a left sided or a right sided bar tube or whatever. This is much, much smaller effect. Try to get your channels and your devices together. So what we are really working hard is to get the channels and the devices together. That's the uh, key message. Um, you can look, when you have your calculated your journeys, you can do all the performance marketing. What I would recommend to do before is look at the structure of the journeys. How do they look like? What is the sequence of marketing channels? What's the sequence of devices used? Uh, is it like home, is it office, is it mobile, is it desktop? What is the period of the time people come? And what you will find quite quickly is people using like a, like a mono style of behavior. A segment where people always do the same thing. And they're different from other people who are doing different things. That could be a, a, normally a very simple first segmentation for the journeys where you can react and, and um, plan your targeting based on this behavior. Very, very simple. Um, and then you can look at your um, contacts over, uh, inside a journey. And you can cut the journeys in like four phases. The attention phase, interest phase, decision, uh, and, and the last A is activity. Um, and you can say, what are, how are my campaigns used by the users? Not how I thought they would use them, but how do they really use them? 
And what we sometimes see, of, often what we sometimes see at our customers, that we have campaigns which are very, um, they're performing very bad in terms of conversion, but they're very good in terms of activation or reactivation. And the customers didn't know, our customers didn't know, because they are very used to me measuring conversion. And uh, they're doing a lot on the conversion side, but they cannot see without the journey stuff uh, what is the activation reactivation effect. So acquisition activation effect on new users, reactivation of top, top customers, existing customers. And on the structure, you can already do that without the, the attribution cor curve and without uh, doing all the side uh, stuff on the marketing cost, because that's the next point which is not so easy. But on a structure, uh, if you have a journey and first look at the structure, you get some very quick, uh, very useful quick wins out of that. Yeah, that was the site. So, um, what we have as um, so that was the user consideration, and you have the structure of the journey. Now, if you want to go to the performance, what you need is the marketing cost. That's the um, component which is missing. Uh, to make a profit calculation on, on the advertising activities. And what we do is to model all the marketing activities uh, in, in a single model. So all campaigns, all marketing activities go to a single table. We have the metadata there, we have the names and the hierarchies, we have, and we have the cost per campaign. And uh, this allows for us to very flexibly, uh, to be very quick and very flexible in hunt, uh, setting up new marketing partners. We don't program anything. If they go to retargeting, uh, to display a new partner in, in email, whatever, um, it's just we, we connect the connector, the data flows in, it shows up in the attribution and in the reports. Yeah? How do you get all the costs in? Pardon? Like how do you get Quasiv and DB costs in? Uh, how do you get all the marketing costs into the from uh, the um, plans normally, from the customers, so to say. So we are the data hub, and we are um, operating the data warehouse for our customers. And the customers providing us with the access to the Google API, to the Facebook API, Criteo, uh, TV uh, plans, basically. You get up front, you get so after. Like we, we can do that, for example, but sometimes agency deliver, the, deliver it in their own format. So it's really a huge world. Everybody does it a bit different. Uh, for standard platforms, we have the connectors. And if uh, they have special um, marketing partners with special formats, then we can build custom connectors. And we need to get the net cost. That's, uh, that's a separate topic for the TV advertisement normally. Um, People like to push around the, the gross cost, but that's useless if you want to do performance marketing. You need the proper cost. Um, but we get TV cost, we get radio cost, out of home cost, we get the online stuff anyway. We have internal cost for email marketing, even if fixed cost, zero cost from agency. So everything that people do in the sales and the marketing, everything you do costs money. And everything that costs money, we want to put in the system and um, put it on, on the context that we generate. And from the context, we have the conversion chain from activity, interest, uh, orders, net orders, net revenue, profit contribution. So um, to have a proper performance management, we need to have as much cost as possible. When, when we start, when we go to our prospects, um, and then we go to the marketing departments, and we put together all the, the, the revenues that they claim. We have normally 30% more revenue than the controlling guys. So we really have to have a, a structured approach on putting the, the marketing cost in, together in one place, in a consistent way, um, in a correct way, and then afterwards we can break it down to the context and attribute it to the, to the measures. Um, this is a, a very painful process for our organization to really bring costs together, because they're not used to do that. But without that, it's, um, you can't do any performance optimization. You need to have data uh, properly in place. And then when you have um, the, the cost in place, you get for, for Google and AdWords and they, you get the cost and the clicks. And you really have to map it on the single clicks, click-ins, on, on the lowest level of the event. Uh, you don't map the marketing cost to the orders. A very traditional approach. You put your orders in the revenue, and then you put your cost on that, and then you do your attribution, don't do it. Um, you will lose 80% of the flexibility that you need to have. Um, so 
you put your cost metrics together. Uh, you have an approach where you manage the different cost models from your marketing partners. You have CPC, you have CPO, you have CP, whatever. Um, you have internal cost. Uh, and you need to have an approach basically to attribute this cost to the single clicks, uh, single contacts in a, in a call center, it's not a click, but to every touch point interaction that you have. Each interaction has a cost, and you have to apply the cost to this single interaction. And then you can aggregate it upwards in direction of products, orders, channels, campaigns, whatever. But you have to um, store it, you have to calculate the cost for a single interaction. And then you can do uh, the performance of marketing channels, of single ad items. You can push the data feeds to Google, to auto bidding uh, systems, to email systems, to sourcing, uh, purchasing uh, systems. And you can compare uh, what we do, what we, what we like to do is compare uh, marketing efficiency across two periods of time. Um, and this is funny because people always think if I put in more or, le uh, more or less uh, effort here, then the outcome will be this or that. And when we do that, and, and we have the full um, chain of from the uh, traffic to the conversion, traffic conversion to the order entry to the uh, profits at the end of the day, they see that many things are changing at the same time. And they were not aware that product managers are changing their stuff, the shop uh, managers are changing the shop, the marketing managers from the different channels are doing different stuff. And um, this is a tool where they become able to understand the different influences and um, try to good as possible understand what is the impact of like increasing the marketing budget by 30% in a different channel. And, and understand what, what else is changing at the same time. Um, if you just look in the auto bidding tools, say uh, I want to increase or decrease the CPC, this is like an idea like I'm the only person in the world who's doing something in my company, and that's not true. And then when it doesn't work afterwards, when the uh, CPC or the CPS or what is not behaving like expected, then people are a bit clueless. And and like this having this. Uh, conversion chain with the different areas of influence is very useful to understand what's going on at a certain period of time from different departments. But also, if you do TV, you have the effect of this branded traffic afterwards. That stuff is sometimes people, it's very hard to understand what's the impact of the TV, direct, indirect, what's branded, what's non-branded, what's uh, bounce rate, what, what are these indirect channels. Uh, it's very interesting to see. And that's what trainings are really useful. And what we also do is like compile all the data, the click data, uh, the purchase data into user profiles. Geographic data, you see everything. You see very good, not 100% precise, but you get better than without. Where visitors are coming from, from a geographic location, you can see is it big city, small city, uh, is it north, is it the south? And the most important thing basically is um, what do people do not? You see what they order. You see in the web tracking solution what they look at, what they put in a basket, but you don't see what they do not do. And this is one of the major discriminators between segments. If you look at top customers, new customers, uh, one-time buyers, repeat buyers, especially for early customers, early, uh, early on in the relationship, what people do not do is much more telling, much more discriminating than what they do. If they're white information area, just or mono, mono bias. This is something where I think the, the comparison of what do people buy, what do people look at, what are the ratios in, uh, in cohorts or in segments, where are they different, what they do not do is much more discriminating than what they do in, in the retail environment. So yeah, always uh, talking about retailers. Uh, might be diff completely different in insurance business. So when you have the user consolidation, the structure of, of the journey, you put the cost in that. You do it in a very generic way that you can scale across price models and across touch points and channels again and, and users. Uh, you put the cost on the interaction, on a single interaction, not on the order. Still, and doing at, at the lowest level, uh, we see a couple of commercial tools which is, where it's really difficult to track the ad, ad items on, on a detail level. Uh, and this is basically very, very, very important. Uh, it's not only the monthly fee or something, it's really you have to track data on a detail level, otherwise you will lose the ab ability to um, target, to get operational afterwards. Don't forget it. If you don't track at the lowest level, you won't be able to get operational or at a much uh, lower precision level. Um, Many people use like CPC or CUR, I don't know the English term, I don't know, uh, it's a cost by, by revenue. 
but think about how you want to measure your success. success. With the Snowplow tool, with the proper BI tool, you can have any, any performance measure that you want to have. And pick the measure that fits to you, because it makes a difference. Uh, that's one uh, recommendation. Just think what kind of measure you need to have and then make a flexible, oh yeah, make a flexible mapping between the click data and the cost reports. Because um, when you uh, said you have to map the cost to the clicks, but how do you go from here to there? Uh, the, the click web tracking people don't care about the marketing uh, report people. And you need some kind of, of logical translation level, level because um, more often than not, the codes doesn't match. We have some uh, new trends like the Google GCL ID, which makes it much simpler to match that stuff. But wherever you go uh, into other marketing areas, you have to have a logical uh, translation um, level to map the codes from the clicks and the cost. Uh, that's something that we found out uh, that that's really helpful. If you don't have to change your programs and your core logic, uh, if this logic doesn't fit from the uh, from the coding, and it's dynamic environment. Campaigns are always changing, tagging is always changing, so you have to decouple that from your core logic. Yeah. If you want to understand your users, what they do and what they don't do, so um, what they do not do is more interesting, I think, what they do, but then you need to really have, again, this complete picture. If you're missing out on devices, then uh, what you think they do not do is just like you're missing the technical stuff on integrating the devices. Uh, that's critical if you look at the stuff that don't happen. Um, that's um, so my last slide here for the user side. I have a few slides on what you can do with the journeys and the products. Do we have a question here for now? User consolidation, journey structure, mapping cost, uh, measuring uh, profitability on the lowest level. Maybe afterwards. So, uh, I'm only a few, few slides to go, don't worry. Um, so there's the user journey, uh, but there's also the, the product journey. And the product journey, what, to, what, what is that? That's the sequence of, not of marketing channels, but of products that peop, uh, people are looking at uh, from the earliest, from the first contact to the next conversion and then between conversions again. And uh, this is more, the, the, the user journey is from the marketing side, acquiring traffic to the sales channel. The product journey is on mostly, not, not, not completely, but mostly on the sales channel, on the shop. Which products you want to place where? On a general rule, beside the personalization. Personalization is um, a part of that, but uh, which products are driving traffic? Which products are converting traffic? You want to have, which brands do you want to have? Uh, how much of a brand do you sell? But what is it worth if you have the brand? And this stuff is really important for uh, overall conversion because um, you have a lot of high profile brands. Um, you have a, a lot of very expensive cat categories which really drive um, the traffic and interest and also good new customers, but they don't convert because they're simply too expensive. Um, and the other thing on the, on the product side is for the product managers to see what's the potential in my traffic base. What could I sell if I could convert at the right price or the right offer? Um, what they see, the product manager, normally they see what they sell. And they see what's in the stock, but they don't see what is not bought. Uh, and it's much more difficult for them to understand what could be sold at the right price point. If they uh, purchase more, they get a cheaper price, they can uh, maybe sell better. So, and for that, Snowblow gives us a lot of information on the uh, users, what they look at, at the products, at the categories, what they put in the basket, what they remove from the basket, uh, and also detailed information, the search terms, the filter terms, so we get a lot of context information on the product level. And uh, with the journey together, you can stuff like, what is the impact of out of stock? If I'm out of stock on a certain product, does this hurt my revenue or not? Do people just buy three days later? What's the impact on that? That's also something that you can do with the journey. And the other stuff, this is a bit more, more difficult. Um, but that's where we get a lot of product information on, uh, uh, from the Snowplow data. And what we do is also like, like a, a marketing user journey attribution with the attribution curve. This is like a bit left skewed for, for acquisition, just to do it now on the visits and, and, and on the product use, on the product events. 
if somebody looks at the product, adds a product, removes the product, converts the product, then this goes on uh, in this product journey. And we give um, each product event a part of the marketing cost. So the clicking cost money. Um, the marketing cost is divided up by the different product events. And it gets also part of the revenue. And then you can calculate the, um, the contribution to the profit on the product events. And normally you do that on the order. You do the profit contribution, contribution on the order. But if you have a case where a brand attracts the traffic and uh, something, a cheaper product gets bought, then this is like a last click logic. You have the same problem like in the marketing with the last click, just on the product side. And with this approach, you can somehow have a fairer uh, attribution of the contribution to your revenue across the products. On, and you can have the attribution uh, strategy. You can um, do that on if it's a viewer or an ad, have different weights on that. And this approach basically gives you a much um, broader view on the product on how products work. And if you compare the attributed revenue to the actual order revenue, then you can see stuff which are similar and stuff which are really completely different. And then you can understand why is that. Are they good performing in terms of traffic? good performing in terms of, of conversion, good performing in terms of reactivation from emails, for example. You really can find out what is the special behavior. Where do you have products which are not profitable in the order context? Maybe you, you don't want to purchase a lot of them, but you want to have them for customer relationship reasons. Yeah, and then you get like, like a report, you have the traffic, you have the products, and you have the attributed uh, value for the products over a period of time. You can break it down to single users uh, for product affinity, so personalization as well. Um, and then you see, for example, he's always buying the uh, cheap, I don't know what t-shirt, but if I want to push, if you want to reactivate him by email, you need to do the other brand, the high value brand, this brand, because this has a higher attributed value, even if, if he doesn't buy it afterwards. But to get the reactivation, to get the click through from the email, you really have to go to this high value attributed products. Now that could be treatment strategies to increase your open rate, your click through rate, all that stuff. That's the last slide. Then you are done with me. So, attribution is really difficult if you do it properly. But do it properly or do it very, very simple. Uh, in between, there's a lot of expectations and uh, you cannot always fulfill the expectations if you do things halfway. If you want, if you do user consolida consolidation, also do it in a very good way. If you want to go until operational excellence, targeting. If you just want to analyze, that's fine, then you don't need to have the good user consolidation. But you lose a lot of your business value if you don't go for targeting. Targeting will bring you a, a, a big chunk of your business case. <coughs> Personalization, segmentation, timing of offers. Uh, that's really, and for that you need really a good, very good quality for your user consolidation. And don't use journeys just for online marketing, use it for CM product management, use it anywhere you can think of. Um, on a technical level, always do the stuff on a detail level. Store, detail, data. You will always need it for operational stuff, for new questions, uh, for new strategy. It's always good if you have the uh, detailed stuff. If you have Google Analytics free version, uh, use it for the front end. Don't try to do anything with the data in the back end. It's a waste of time. My opinion. Don't do it. <laughs> well, don't use Google Analytics Premium, but that's a different story. <laughs> uh, channels and devices. To bring this stuff together is more important than this fancy attribution curves. Do the attribution curves when you have the channels and uh, the devices when you've done your homework. If you're missing on the devices or the channels, you will never be able to compensate by a very, very clever attribution curve. And do journeys for buyers and for non-buyers, uh, not only for, for buyer journeys. Um, we have even have very old, big retailers who calculate in journeys just for buyer journeys. Don't do it. Buy, uh, calculate it for everyone, for customers when they buy, customers when they do not buy, for prospects, for everyone. Single journeys, you will need it. You need it for customer treatment strategies, for customer uh, development strategies. And you need to understand where your marketing uh, expenses are really. Uh, because if you allocate the marketing cost to the orders, um, your mindset is always like what cost me an order. And this is 
this is not true. Because 90% of your marketing cost goes to non-buyers. And if you think they're going to the buyers, you try to optimize the buyers. That's good. But also optimize the 90% of the non-buyers. And many, many retailers I meet, they're always trying to optimize the 10% of the buyers. You should still do that 10%, but also think about the 90%. That's the only message here. Um, yeah, that's one. Then, if you have uh, training scores, have a look where you can use them. You can use them in many, many places. Anytime a lot of things going on in parallel, that's a good indication that journey scores can help. And take care about the marketing costs. Um, really try to put them down at the lowest level of in single contacts. That's already, if you do that, you have already done a lot of stuff. Um, thanks for your attention and please for your questions. I see some people smiling. Um, as a, as a long-term very kind of expert, so what, would you, what, what would you like to see the uh, functionality of the features that, uh, that doesn't exist today? What I, what I really like uh, hearing tonight is that you are starting integrating uh, additional tools. Because this uh, integration of tools is a pain in the ass for us. There are so many tools on the market and in the world. Uh, so if, if you can have that, that's good for us. Um, because channels, tools, everything will get uh, more and more fragmented. There will be more and more. Um, and that's the opportunity to do things in a proper way. Because it's not just about uh, pushing data from left to right. It's really about having applications and processes done in a proper way. Our raw data is as stupid or as, as clever as you make them. And that, that's a good opportunity.